All right, so I've had a few people ask me how it is that I get such good prints out of the Cobra Go. And so today I figured that I would share some tips on how it is that I managed to get this thing set up so well. And I'm going to share them in the order that I think that they should be executed. So the first setup tip that I want to share with you is belt tension. How to get the belt tension right on this printer. I already have a video how to do that, but I'm going to add a few tips to this. But before we go moving anything around, uh, you have to go into the menu to the move axis and you need to disable the steppers. So now we can move the bed or the print head without having to worry about sending a spike of voltage back to the controller. So you don't want to do that. And I still suggest that you do gentle movements. Don't be shoving it back and forth uh, quickly. But although that video exists and the link is uh, showing on the screen, there's a few items that I just wanted to add to that video to try to help you to be able to get this printer where it needs to be faster. So I used this jig that I created and I created steps in increments of two millimeters. The step that you need to use is the 13 millimeter and you'll see that in the video that I have. But if you cannot print this, what you need to do is you need to find something where you can create a 13 millimeter gap and 10 millimeters wide and then follow the instructions on the video. And it could be the equivalent of taking a pencil and wrapping a tape around it until you reach the uh, 13 millimeter diameter so that you're able to follow the instructions and move the bed back, lift up the belt, slip it underneath. You can see that I can get that underneath, but there's too much more tension required to get it to the next step. So you don't have to have this jig. You need 13 millimeter uh, gap and uh, 10 millimeters wide. The other thing that I want to mention is that you need to find a way to be able to uh, have an indication point on this dial. So I used the post-it note wrapped around it with a piece of tape to hold it on and a decal, but this could be a post-it note or a piece of tape. You want to dial in the belt until you feel that it is uh, tight on whatever the object is, but you're still able to move the object out from underneath easily. Once you have that, you'll put a black mark on the label and the post-it note so that you know that this is your reference point. Once you've got your reference point, you can print a test cube and you inspect the wall just like I've shown in the initial video. And you can dial left or right. Once you find the position, make a new mark. Maybe you make it in a different color so that it's blue, so that it, this is the position where it will print well. I found out recently that my prints had deteriorated a little bit and when I had a look I noticed that it had backed off, it had released some of the tension on the belt. So because I had the mark on it from having dialed it in, I was able to easily put it back and it happened on both belts, on the uh, bed, the belt for the bed and the belt for the print head and they backed off approximately the same amount, approximately a quarter of a turn. Okay, so tip number two is related to the eccentric nuts that are on the various aluminum extrusions. And I just want to put emphasis on the fact that I should be able to move this with fingertip pressure and it should move easily. If I grab a hold of the print head, I shouldn't be able to make that roller slip with fingertip tension. And I've got them adjusted so that they don't, but you want to do the same process with all of the eccentric rollers. I know that it's a little bit more difficult to do this test with the Z axis, but it is doable. So if you take your fingers and, and you use the coupling to rotate it up and down, you should be seeing that the rollers are moving. And again, fingertip pressure, I cannot make that roller slide. If I roll this up, move the Z axis up, I can push it down easily with my finger and I can see that the roller is moving. Uh, if you want to, you can take a marker and put a little line on it, but go around and do that with each one of those rollers. And like I said, I know it's challenging to reach those rollers in these positions, but take your time. I mean, do it over and over again until you feel confident 
that you have it, that it can move smoothly, and that there is no play. You get this right, and this will make a huge difference to the quality of your prints because that nozzle will be stable in its movements. Okay, so tip number three is bed leveling. You want to run a bed leveling, you go through the menu, you're going to move down to leveling, and you're going to activate the automatic bed leveling, and it will run through the process of capturing the details of how flat the bed is or not. Then you want to make sure that you have the bed leveling turned on so that it will use the data that you've just captured from that auto leveling. The easiest way to do that is to add a line in Cura to the machine settings so that it will use that data for every print that you slice with that printer profile. I have a video on how to be able to make sure that the bed leveling is turned on in Cura, just a matter of adding the line to Cura. If you're not using Cura and you're using another slicer, let me know and I'll see if I can help out on showing you how to be able to add the line in the slicer of your preference. The next tip is about the Z offset and setting the Z offset. You want to make sure that you only do this once you know that the automatic bed leveling is actually turned on. The reason why you want to make sure that the automatic bed leveling is turned on is because I know that my bed is not flat. So there's some dips and waves in this bed. And if I go and try to set the Z offset without that automatic bed leveling turned on, I could end up setting the Z offset down in a valley so that it'll be close to the bed to get good adherence, but I'll start scraping the bed in a high point. Or if I set the Z offset in a high point then and get good adhesion in the high point, I could end up with the filament hanging in the air crossing the valley. I have a video on how to be able to set the Z offset on the Cobra Go and the link is on screen. So a great way to see if your automatic bed leveling is turned on and working is to have some form of indicator on your Z axis. So I drew up this part and printed it and then it's just a light press on to the Z rod right here and this way it amplifies the movement. So when you're watching a single layer when the bed leveling is turned on and if you're moving from one extreme on the bed to the other you will see this will move uh, back and forth as the print head follows the profile of the bed whether it's wavy or it just has a pure dip or it has a hump you'll be able to see this moving back and forth and it's showing that the print head is following the profile of the bed. I have a video for this and a link to the file for being able to print one if you want to. The other thing that you can do is you can just take a piece of tape and wrap it around this Z-Rod and create a flag. All you want to do is be able to amplify the movement. Very difficult to see the automatic bed leveling functioning by looking at this Z-Rod or even looking at the coupling, it's very, very difficult. I tried to see it working by looking at the coupling, but found it too difficult. Initially used a piece of tape as a flag and then drew up this part and printed it and put it onto, onto the Z-Rod and, and I love it. I think it's really, really fun. I ended up doing exactly the same thing down below for the uh, extruder here. So I'm able to watch the retraction taking place. And uh, I actually find it quite, quite interesting. The last tip for today, after you've gone through the previous four, whether you're just verifying or you're actually setting up as per those tips, is for you to print a temperature tower and then print a retraction tower. I don't have any videos for those. There are lots of great videos online and I'll post a link to a video for that in the description below. If you've gone through these steps and everything is going well, and you want to try to see if you can improve your prints even just a little bit more, check out this video on the speed limit of the filament retraction settings. Please leave a comment below with any questions or feedback. Thanks for watching. Happy printing.